This video is from Chapter 7, Section 4. We'll be working on Objective Number 3, where we solve problems using the Pythagorean Theorem. Specifically, I will be working on Example Number 3. Now, just to start out with a little background knowledge, we're going to be working, working with the Pythagorean Theorem, which is kind of an important thing for you to work on. You need to know this. And I'm going to give you a little background knowledge to help you understand it a little bit better. The Pythagorean Theorem was developed by a mathematician named, of all people, Pythagoras of Samos. And he lived about 2,500 years ago. And he was a mathematician and a philosopher. And he was heavily inf one of the people who influenced Plato and er therefore Aristotle. So we owe a lot to Pythagoras. And as mathematicians, we owe a lot to Pythagoras. Because what he noticed one day was if you took a right triangle and took the length of one of the sides and took that length and squared it and took the length of the other side, short side and squared that, you would have two squares with different area. And he noticed that if you combine the two areas, you would get an area that was equal to this side squared. So the area of A squared plus the area of B, which is B squared, equals the area of C, which is C squared. And again, very, very important equation, something that you should really know about. So let's take a look at our example. So here, they are giving, asking us to take a look at a right triangle. Now, a right triangle has this little square in the corner, and that tells us that this particular angle is 90 degrees. And we'll name these sides. This is side A, side B, and side C. And in our problem, they've given us some values. So B equals 12 and C equals 13. So just a little more background. Um, the side opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. You need to know that. Or you can think of it this way too. The longest of the three sides in a right triangle is the hypotenuse. And the measure of C is the hypotenuse. So we're going to use. Pythagoras' theorem, so that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And we're going to use that to figure out what this value is. So first of all, we can plug in our values. So we don't know what a is, so it's going to stay a squared. But we do know what b is. It's 12. So that's 12 squared. And we know what C is. It's 13. So this would be 13 squared. And again, I can tell I may be working toward a quadratic equation, but let's see what happens. So this is still this. I'm going to simplify. 12 squared is 144. And 13 squared is 169. Now, I'm getting closer. And remember, if I have a quadratic, I have ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. In this particular case, I have this term and I have this term. I'm missing that middle term, and that's probably going to be OK. We'll see what happens. But I have to get it down to equal 0. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 169 from both sides. So now I'll have a squared minus 25 equals 0. There I have it. There's the first term and the last term equals 0. And this is kind of an important pattern to look for. Because remember, if I have this squared minus this squared, the factors of this are a plus b times a minus b. 
a plus b times a minus b. When you multiply those two factors together, the middle term cancels out and you're left with that. So I can look up here and there's a perfect square and there's a perfect square. So this will work out as a plus the square root of 25 is 5 times a minus 5 equals 0. One of these have to equal 0 for this to be true, so this is a equals negative 5 or a equals positive 5. And remember, we're dealing with a dimension up here. This is in real life, so it has to be a positive number. So this one, we're not going to use it, and instead we'll use this one. So the missing side is a equals 5. Okay. Now, what I'd like you to do is stop and copy. And when you're done stopping and copying, I want you to go ahead and try the you try number four, and that's on page 407.